I think we should grab something from the cellar. <laughs> That's what we call it a beautiful little shit show around here because there's always something. Dogs are barking, people are coming in and out of the doors. I have just like, I was like, why did I do this at my house? Studio setups are the coolest thing in the world, though. I'm like in here, like looking around because Every, everyone's is different, but it's the same kind of vibe. It's true. Do you go to a studio or do you have you do it in your house? I, I have my house. You yeah. do it there we're, in your house we're, too. We're trying to get a new place with a barn. I'm like really trying to make it so that one corner's like straight to camera, one corner's podcast studio, yeah. and then a performance stage. So you can have like live shows oh, and stuff. Snap. Yeah. That's kind of a good idea. Yeah, that's next step. Whoa. A barn? I want a barn. Yeah, I want a barn so bad. Oh my god, are you gonna get a horse? I don't <laughs> You're that, like, no, it's it, for a studio, Caitlin, yeah. not a horse. I don't think I could handle a horse, but a dog is enough. Um, well thank you for drinking rose with me today. Of course. And coming on the podcast. Um I'm gonna I'm really doing it. Okay, I was so sick yesterday and I was like, There's no way I'm drinking today and then I felt better today, and I was like, well, I had an IV, and like... Don't drink for me. You, you no, know, I'm drinking for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely drinking for me. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. You're in Nashville, and you had a show at Zany's? Yeah. <gasps> I heard, Iconic. I heard, they told me they couldn't get enough of your wine, that you just completely sold it out, and that you recommended, we need more wine, and they were like, no, this will be enough, and yes. in your audience. <laughs> that did happen. That did happen. How I know. Funny. I call everyone, I think you know, the Vinos, and... Every time they just blow my mind. Like I was at the Taylor Swift concert the other night and she said something so cute. She was like, I just always have this fear that you guys are all going to get sick of me. And that is my fear. And every time they just show up, I'm like, oh, you're not sick of me yet. Yeah. What is that, though? What's that? Have you like labeled? Is it an imposter thing? Um, is it like you're waiting to figure out that I'm not who you think I am? Maybe. <laughs> or I, mm, this goes deep. I did a like really deep kundalini yoga therapy the other day. And she got to the root of 18 year old Caitlin from when my parents divorced. And it was like a whole thing around, I felt shame in their divorce. And I was like, none of my other friends, parents are getting divorced. And this must mean something's wrong with my family. And I went into like a shame spiral at that point in my life, but I never really like healed it because I was, I was like well my friends are or my parents are best friends and they still like do Sunday dinners and that's like the healthy divorce and that doesn't affect me but I buried it and now I think I feel like I'm people's like what they look up to and I feel like what if I bring them shame or what if I all of a sudden do something where they're like that doesn't seem like Caitlyn anymore and I'm like they are just sick of me and I is this this is really no because it's natural that the audience is going to project the best in you yeah and you're like yeah but there are days where i'm sick there are days when i'm snappy where i you know hate yeah. what i'm doing and i think i so that's why i try so hard to show that kind of stuff on social media too because i don't want to be an unrealistic version of myself to other people and i want to sh like shine I, I feel like i'm on this planet to like shine a light <laughs> I'm not high right now, I swear to God. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I'm supposed to shine some sort of light on imperfections instead of trying to be perfect. And like even, I'll have imposter syndrome. I posted a bathing suit pic the other day and I was like, oh my God, that is so not me. But then I was like, yes, it can be. I can be both. Yeah, you certainly can. Yeah. But yeah, so often we'll, we won't resolve our previous issues because we just move on to the next thing in life. You're 18, you're, you're becoming an adult, you're moving on. And then finally we get to an age, because we're about the same age, where you start to like have some some space and yeah. you're like, oh yeah, I'm so over, I'm so overbearing to my mom emotionally. Right. And I'm not, and you like realize where you could have been better and realizing that things don't have to be perfect. Yeah, all that. Do you go to therapy? No, I oh. need to. Well, you, no, you said. I know. I said it like I. <laughs> I've done the therapy hack where I just talk to people about their therapy. That's that's <laughs> actually pretty genius. That would save you a lot of money. My therapy is listening to you talk about your inner child work. Basically, what you're getting at is you know a lot more about me than sometimes I think I know myself. I. You have to. It's your research. I've done. It's so creepy. I feel when I meet people, I'm like, I know a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, because I mean, I don't just say this um you your 
unapologetically authentic. And so many people try to be the opposite of that, that they just want to please everybody and do yeah. all, especially, you know, they're on a show where people are going to scrutinize you for every move you make. And, you know, you probably have to apologize more than a lot of people. Yeah. Not that not, not you specifically, but when you're authentic, everyone's not going to vibe with that. Yeah. But when you keep that, like you said, you want to be someone who like spreads love. When you keep on that path, people's energy will shift to rise to you yeah. in a way. I appreciate you saying that because that's something I think I want to see happen because I feel so proud of this community that I've built. And then on top of the community, they've built their own community of people. And I just always want people to kind of like grow with me and fall with me and fail and like see my ups and downs, but then still be supportive. And you know what I mean? Like I never want people to just turn on me and be like, you're canceled. (laughs) <laughs> but you know what must be tough for for someone in your position is y- you're allowed to feel your feelings but an audience that doesn't follow your every step and move they might go why why does she get anxiety she's got right. it all yeah and that's got to be a hard place because in some to some people maybe you do have it all but you're still a human who's battling all the emotions and you really do realize all the things you're searching you, know, you got the mirror ball trophy you know what right. i mean right. and that's great but it's like okay now what else do have I not resolved and and, and you know and you, you're still gonna feel your anxiety and things like that I'll always feel that and it's crazy that you say that because it was one of those things where and I remember talking to Hannah Brown about this too where she thought once I win the mirror ball like okay then I'll be happy or once you do this because then you've accomplished and you've accomplished and everybody always thinks what's next with my accomplishments what am I doing but for anyone listening you could read your highest goal and you still have to deal with all your inner demons that yeah. come along with those where that is fun in the moment but it's fleeting and it's like okay well now I did that and then you get that addiction to it where you go what what can I do next so do you have something like that where you're like okay i did this now i want to achieve this it's every day it's every stand-up bit you write and it's a dopamine thing i'm a huge sugar addict so like it's dopamine because Mm -hmm. you want in it and some people channel it through sex through drugs alcohol whatever but you're just chasing this high and if you think you finally got to the finish line newsflash you didn't and that and your bank account might look crazy good but you're not there that's gonna wear off yeah you know most like lottery winners blow through their money because they just realize that ain't it yeah. And it's still good to pursue all these things, but like th- whatever that itch is you want to scratch, you have to find like the healthy way to do it mm. because uh, all the superficial ways are not going to lead to any sort of like long lasting. Why do you love. think people can't figure that out? Like, why do you think? Because I'm in there too. Why do you think it's so hard? Well, we know what the right thing to do is. We know that it's not the numbing, the addictions, the next big thing. We know that's never going to solve our problems. Why is it so hard to? dig that deep and figure it out. I think you're more of an achiever than a lot of people. I think a lot of people, you know, I'm, it's a tough place out there right now for a lot of people. Yeah. They're realizing they're, you know, we, we have our healthcare dangled on our employment, which yep. as a Canadian, I don't know what you think of that, but it's like ridiculous. It's <laughs> like, hey, thoughts. we have good healthcare perks, so you should work for us. The f- out of here with right. that. But it's like, most people don't get out of that rut, so they don't even get to the creative, fulfilling side of things, so they don't even know what, what will come when they get to that level. Mm. So for me, you know, I do stand-up, I, yeah, you write a joke, the feeling of new laughter, oh. that's that's like new sex. I get that. You just like, that's, that's this new thing, and it's amazing. But then once you know the joke works, that dopamine doesn't hit the same way. Right. And it's like, let's write the next thing. Yep. And that's like a, probably a healthy way to go over it, as long as I don't bash myself when I'm running new things that don't work. It's like, no, I'm great. I'm experimenting. I'm taking risk. You're going to have business businesses that fail, but yeah. you're going to try and yeah. you're going to have ones that succeed. So when you were younger, uh, were, do you, were you the same way that I was like, you have always been this achiever and you wanted to like do stand up? Like, how did you grow up as a kid? I didn't think stand up was an option because you you, I only saw Chris Rock. YouTube and the internet has made it so people can see the growth of like getting to a place. So like Isn't growth cool? mindset. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. You just didn't know that. So it's like Chris Rock's amazing. I, you know, he sells out, you know, Madison Square Garden. That's the only stand up I saw. It wasn't until I went to an right. open mic and I was like, whoa. You're right. Which, by the way, we're going to get you into stand up. <gasps> That's my main goal today is to get I'm you in. in. You want to get a healthy dopamine fix. I mean, there's some unhealthy aspects of stand up, but. Yeah, there's a lot that scares you're me. You're freaking hilarious. I'm. Get. You just don't Thank worry. You. That's the best compliment anyone could ever give me. You need to do it, but but not attach your name to it. Just show up to an open mic as Kate. Oh. <laughs> Go as Kate and then show up, do your thing. And then yeah, next thing you know, you'll be doing a spade and sparrows at every comedy show across the country. 
and you'll, you'll lose my number. And, and <laughs> First of all, way to try and spin zone this back to me. I still want to know about you. Okay, so I, I single <laughs> but then mom. We'll get to that because single, I... mo- single mom Plus and single mom who works too hard. Yeah, she yeah. never had child support. Left my dad when she was pregnant with yeah. me. So daddy issues, not really. Other than he wasn't there, but it wasn't all like he left, divorce. None of that, like none of that mm. toxic thing that can come with a divorce just didn't exist. Right. Um, sister and I didn't talk much growing up. Good relationship now. Irish twins, which means we're eleven months apart. So like my mom was busy. Oh yeah. And then and then left him because he was a Vietnam vet and he just was like he, he it wasn't healthy for her. PTSD, Ooh. he passed away in the last decade. Wow, uh, didn't, I'm sorry. M- no, well, didn't know him. Right. Met him when I was in my early 20s. My mom showed up. So you did know him. Well, well, met him like a handful of times. Yeah. But my mom sh- came to my sister and I and was like I have news to tell you guys and we were like she she had just had uh she got remarried to yeah. my great my stepdad's great yeah. but then she um she uh, had a, had a couple of kids one of which is 18 years younger than me <gasps> half brothers love them to death Cute. just love them but this was a couple years after that or a year after jack was born and i'm 19 and i go oh man is she pregnant again this is so embarrassing when your mom's breastfeeding <laughs> it, when you're on a high school baseball team and she's just in left field like <laughs> Love moms who breastfeed, but at the time I was right. like, you know, and she's Pro like, breastfeed. and she, she print she had these printed out pieces of paper because this is 2003 or whatever. Yeah. And she didn't have the internet on her phone. So she printed out these emails, like the boomer that she is. Cute. And it was messages from a sister. I didn't know I had. Now, was that something that you were like, what the f- or were you like, I'm excited. All, all good. All good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brothers, sisters, I'm an uncle, all these things. And now you guys are all close as a family? Like you're... Br- uh, some came to my wedding uh, last year or some didn't, but they wow. are all, they're all in touch and they're all in Missouri and they're just this amazing family. So I didn't meet my father on that first trip because they wanted to, they really wanted to protect me and say, hey, you, we don't know what it's going to be like. Right. And so I was afraid, not necessarily, my mom never talked trash about him, but yeah. I didn't know the nuances yeah. of PTSD. Right. I mean, he, you know, he served in a war where they weren't, they weren't respected when they came home, the right. troops and people didn't understand the scar tissue that existed. PTSD wasn't a term back then. My dad, we found out lived in Alaska and that's all I knew about him was that wow. he lived in Alaska. That's all I didn't know he had family. And he lived there because there was a veterans, there was no veterans hospital there. So they could get the benefits of a veteran at an actual, at a better hospital, like a better institution. Like um, hospital as in injuries or like mental health? Mental health. And I think just wow. whatever other uh, issue needs that he had. And um, anyway, I eventually got to meet him and he was just like, a, you know, an older version of me guy was if I look like I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day, just like older beat no up version way. of me. And he was a good guy and he still played. We both played baseball. We had all these similarities. All of cool? my, all of my other siblings were like, you know, look, looked like him, but in a different way. Right. But I was like strikingly like him. Okay. So what was that moment? Like you, did you fly there or what happened yeah. for you two to like meet up? And what was that moment like? So it turned out when I went to meet him for the first time, I was having a rough summer. I was like, you know, in college, you know, just being r- rowdy. And, yeah. and I was like, I need to get out of here. I live, come from an island in Rhode Island. Yeah. And I was like, I need to go. I need to get out of here. And I decided to go visit him in St. Louis like a month before I was supposed to go. And they were like, we didn't want to tell you this, but it's actually a family reunion that weekend. Nuh-uh. So if you feel comfortable, we'll go to this family reunion. So there I am like meeting cousins. And and I did like this long two, three hour ride to the reunion with him in his pickup truck. And we got to meet and he was, of course, uh, you know, a good guy. He's just, he's got his own struggles. It doesn't define him. Right, right. And, but he li- li- lived this life where after being in the war in his early twenties, he, he, he probably never graduated from that a lot of jealousy issues that's what he had with my mom Mm because she was a young pretty lady and of course for my mom she just had to get out of there she can't solve his issues yeah and um sure enough all the family that comes from him with you know he had five different wives at different times but so there's all (laughs) there's a whole family tree here yeah and we're all united by this guy who tried his best but the world didn't really fit him yeah and passed away and on his deathbed, he had a veteran friend that was helping him and everything on his final moments. And then afterwards, they found out that friend had um, had like drained all of his savings. Oh, and, for and, fuck's and sake. So it was like on his dying bed, the world still was, was like robbing him. him. Yeah. Huh. And but in those moments, he had he had he had overcome all of the the pain and the guilt that he had for not being a a, a father for yeah. all of his other yeah. kids too. And I, th- I still think he left Earth 
uh, feeling like he was forgiven. Yeah. And that was that like radical empathy thing that I think helps guide what I try to do, which is yeah. like, hey, he didn't ask for the thing that happened to him. You know, he went there in good faith. And and um, I think most people operate that way in yeah, good faith. Right. Wow. What a story, too. And like, even though he might not have thought he was a, like lived a certain legacy, he actually did. And you got to see that and meet him. And then like, I'm sure that brought you some sort of peace in your life, too. And I don't know. I love stories where it's like. It's crazy that the world just seems to be against him. Like, in my mind, I go, wow, that guy's going to come back in another life and live a beautiful life. And do you believe in that kind of thing? Cause I'm, I, I don't know, but I'm not here. against the idea. Yeah, yeah I think we, we sort of carry on the story of what his life wasn't. And that's why that's where it becomes easy to take big sort of risks in life because you're like, he well, would have he never got a chance to do any of this. I I like that perspective because you've taken this route where you're doing stand up. Like did you ever see yourself driving around in cars with celebrities asking them questions <laughs> or like like you took this turn in life that I think a lot of people wouldn't because you know, there's 0.01% of people that like to take risks or do something outside of their comfort zone. Everyone thinks you're supposed to do this blueprint of you know, you get go to school, you get this job, you get married, you have kids like this is just how we do it, where I don't have those same beliefs of the blueprint, but I don't think you really do either. Yeah, um, I tried. I tried the college, got a business degree. Right. And I was months into a job and I was like, oh, boy, this, yeah. this ain't it. I got into advertising because I thought I wanted to be in advertising. Turns out I liked the movie um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey was an advertising guy. Yeah. And he was this big wig. It doesn't work that way. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, I no, just wanted to be that. Matthew McConaughey. That's all Fucking I wanted. movies ruining everything <laughs> for us of what we think life's going to be in yeah. romance and work and jobs. And yeah, yeah. it's just like. But I think what people what people need is just a window of hope to what they can have. And this is what like guidance counselors, at least mine, never gave me. Like there just wasn't an option. Yeah. But through that advertising job, I met a bunch of filmmakers because they all worked in the creative ad world. And they introduced me to the film world. I got into acting, was in SAG and got on a pilot oh. and started working in acting, which led to improv and stand up. So I, 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 I failed my way into what I now love. But uh, yeah, maybe I would have had a job I that was better and I would have never gotten to that. I mean, the job sucked so much that it was easy to learn at the age of 22. Like this ain't it. That's good. A lot of people though, don't, don't have the mindset of failure till you find something you love. That's a really cool mindset to have. I feel like there's so many of my listeners who, you know, have certain jobs that they're like, oh, I don't know if this is for me or how do you, you know, manifest your dreams or go after what, and, but that, perspective of failing till you find something you love is actually really cool yeah and sometimes you don't know Sorry, like, that... <laughs> no sometimes you don't know what your thing is and just feel the energy what makes yeah. you wake up early and want to do something right. and you know maybe you like to wrap presents and see people's joys and you start a gift wrapping company like right. it doesn't you don't have to it doesn't have to be something that already exists that's true you know i'm and, gonna fix this for you okay do you um do you want to smell better by any chance do you get a little stinky in the summer a little ripe? If you're being honest with yourself, it's probably a hard yes to both of these questions. And now you can smell better this summer and year round. And it's thanks to the Lumi whole body deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. I've talked about Lumi on the pod before, and I really think it's just the best. So if you haven't learned about it already, it's time. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who developed a uniquely formulated pH balanced deodorant. It's aluminum free, skin safe, clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. And did I mention that it's also clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone? It's crazy. 12 hours after a shower with the average person has an odor level of 6 out of 10. But with Lumi, the average odor is a 0 out of 10. Zero. Seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. I like to put Lumi on my pits, duh. And my feedsies, too. Okay, I'll admit it. Those guys could get real ripe on me. And their starter pack is perfect for new customers, and it comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like mini body wash, deodorant wipes for on the go, and free shipping. We love free shipping. As a special offer for my listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code VINE at lumideodorant.com. 
That equates to over 40% of your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code VINE. That's L-U-M-E, deodorant.com. Okay, so even though I enjoy doing a lot of things in my everyday, like cooking, singing, podcasting, drinking wine... Lal. I still feel like I have so much to learn about those things and a million other things. And that actually excites me because I love learning and trying new things. I think evolving is the most important thing we can do. And I was just telling my podcast producer how I continue to learn about wine for Spade and Sparrows. And then I found a wine appreciation course on Masterclass and one where Gordon Ramsay can teach me how to cook. That's crazy. And I found one also where Christina Aguilera can teach me how to improve my singing. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> with Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. Annual memberships start at $10 a month, which is, I mean, incredibly reasonable, and you get unlimited access to every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insights, and so much more. Now, I signed up and I'm already taking several classes. I really like to watch before bed when I'm winding down for the night, like a little night class for me. I like to think it sinks into my brain cells while I'm sleeping. <laughs> so how much would it cost to take one-on-one -on -one classes from the world's best? Well, with a Masterclass annual membership, it would only cost you $10 a month. So get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as an Off the Vine listener, you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash vine. That's masterclass.com slash vine for 15% off an annual membership. Masterclass.com slash vine. Um, That's like your cue to have me stop talking. The mic just falls off. <laughs> I'm like, cue the mic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but here's what I here's what I love about having followed your career is to hear your story of being, you know, working in the restaurant world. Mm -hmm. Most people in restaurants are trying to do other things. And I found this through other gigs that I've done. And there is this you, you can get stuck in, in restaurants that are high paying. Like if you're a bartender, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's hard to, to break out of yeah. that. And then what, what, from at least what I've heard from your story, you had that moment where you you, you hit critical mass and you're like, I guess I'm done with that. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly, I could have kept like working my way up. I, I eventually was like, well, I guess, you know, if all else fails, I'll just be the GM of a restaurant. But I knew like my soul knew that I, that is not what I was meant to do. I knew I could. I learned so much over the 11 years of working in the restaurant business, but I just knew that wasn't like my legacy. That's not like what I was put here on this planet to do. And I just feel like it's, it's people people underestimate their intuition and their passion for something and people think you have to have these business degrees or you know all this education to do what you want to do and I think it's like social skills and passion. Business degrees are garbage. Garbage. It's, you're just killing time till you figure out you do get a lot of connections in the business sure. world like that's it it's a networking thing. But welcome thing. to the internet. Yeah. Yeah it's I feel like that's it's I say this for stand-up comedians but I really mean it for so many other people to have a platform where you get to have an audience now is so cool for you guys that you don't have to go grind like all the time at you know stand up comedy clubs even though i'm sure that's such a fun part of it it's glorified it has it's, it has its nights is it it has its nights and there's nights where you're just like white knuckling it on the way home like what's the worst stand-up experience where you're like what am i doing there's this audition mic that i was doing and you got to do three minutes in front of the bookers and you're up on stage and they cut me off i knew they cut me off early like oh, you get to, you get that. to realize when someone's like do seven minutes you just know when it's 6 55 you really get good at that yeah like uh, give me a three minute light because my last bit's two and a half minutes right. you know that type of thing and they they lit me early and it was a mic i shouldn't have auditioned for i was already touring and doing other yeah. things and I was so pissed. Like, I didn't know. I got off stage and I saw they lit me at a minute and a half. And it was like, it was already a three minute mic. So you can barely do a joke. Yeah. I got out of there. You're like, knock, knock. They're like, bye. <laughs> I was kicking doors on the way out. And I just immediately drove across town to another mic just to get the stink off of me. Yeah. Just to be like, okay, I, you need, it's with stand up and with most things, you don't have control over a lot of the environments that you're in. So you have to, you try to control everything you can. Yeah. I know comedians I've opened for, they want to know exactly what the temperature is in the room and they're in a, you know, all these little things because you know, they've done shows where it's too warm and then the audience gets a little tired. Like there's a specific, uh, uh, environment oh, you want to curate. Crazy. You want the light to be right. You want the mic to be right. And all these things. I don't really, I mean, it's whatever. Everyone's got their own thing. They are trying to control because it's like, you can't control. I'm like, you're not that funny then if you need to worry about the <laughs> yeah. actually he was a he was a killer comic oh well shit that which is the crazy sucks. part because some people are that locked in on on all the things but it's like you don't need to be like that's just you trying to control things you can't control but i guess there is some sort of system to that though because i went to a 
comedy show in at Zany's actually not too long ago where it had been pouring rain all day. Everybody had waited outside in the rain. People were grumpy when they got in. And then he did a show like four nights in a row after that where the weather was good. And he was like, the show you were at was the shittiest one because people are in a bad mood, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I guess that does play into it there would be nothing nothing worse than if you saw me at a show that wasn't at least a decent show because then i know oh she's gonna think of me as that guy that you that's know so but that's what happens sometimes you but know that's sometimes because we're so hard on ourselves like i would hate if you walked out of here and you're like ah shit she, the bar was so high and you know like that would suck you have this way of laughing and i said if i can if she can laugh once this way then i'll feel okay oh. it's that you do this like <laughs> you just gave it to me I though you're, swear to you you're on just... everything i i swear to you on everything that was genuine because i didn't know what laugh you're talking about till it came yeah. out and i went oh that one it's that like one. this like ha <laughs> huh. no I have, I have um a few different laughs that one's very specific that's that's one i look for i'm okay. not okay well, so i'm not good. i'm not just gonna give it to you again Felt given, but, but yeah i swear it wasn't but yeah those things when you're doing stand-up you just like i did a show in new york at the um this puppy company it was like it was like a dog Dog, dog barking business where every month they give you a different dog product yeah. and it's a subscription business and they have a stand-up show every month so comics Dude. come and all this so i'm doing this bit and i was like the set was going really well but i was like i have this 30 seconds left like i'm getting to this final punchline but throughout the crowd i could just see this little meatball of a dog running under everyone's chairs and i was like the second he gets to the stage this dog's gonna be way funnier than anything i'm about to say so yeah. i'm just like cutting out aspects of the joke just getting to it so i can get that laugh to yeah. get off stage and then walk off and i'm like like, I don't know if and when that'll be useful, but it's like you you learn your act um, uh, for, forwards and backwards that you you can sort of adjust when things aren't going well or something happens in the crowd. Right. It's not about being memorized and ready to go. It's about like just just adjusting and being in the moment. And yeah. that's kind of why I love it so much, because we do live on our phones. And yeah. and it's just that that's the one time in the day yeah. when I'm there doing my dance. Yeah, that's how I feel about podcasting. It's very in the moment. And you're just like having authentic converse conversations. And I feel like that doesn't happen very much. But um, I was thinking about when, you know, through your career of highs and lows, and you were white knuckling after that one, how old were you? Do you remember? I started stand up mid 20s. Wow. So brave. In, in which way? You think I was young or old? No, that's... Uh, neither. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like usually people... I guess... No, I guess. I wanted because to... why would you start going into bars when you're like 16 years old? But I, I guess I just know some that have been like, oh, I was funny since I was little and I started doing stand-up as soon as I could. But I found out... I had a guy compliment my humor in high school on the football team. Uh -huh. And a lot of times you're in the huddle and like the conditions suck. You're practicing. Everyone hates it. It's just like miserable. You're just running into each other like mean. Like the games are fun, but the practices right. suck. And this one... And I would just like say random things and it would crack <laughs> It would crack the huddle and people would laugh. And this, and this one guy was like, Dave, you're really funny. And no one told me that in my love language is like affirmations yeah so i was like you think so <laughs> and i loved I it i loved it and then in college i for mr greek week which is this fraternity pageant really for men <laughs> the men do this every every house does like a talent show and everyone oh, watches cute. it in a giant theater it's, it's you did stand up i wanted to oh. and this guy his name john he was like hey dave I had like written my act. I was going to make fun of like toga, how like togas were kind of like, I'm glad we chose this old Greek um, tradition versus other ancient traditions. And I was like somehow relating doing car bombs to actual car bombs. It was like this whole <laughs> yeah. toga versus other you know, turbans. It was this whole like stupid thing. Yeah. And, and this guy goes, hey, stand-up's really hard. You really shouldn't do it. And I didn't do it. And I didn't do it. Because he said that? Yeah. So, so for six years, I never did it. And maybe I would have bombed and never tried it afterwards. I was don't know. Was he funny? Was he just getting in your getting in your dome? I think anyone can do stand up. I think everyone's got a, a unique way they look at well, the now, world. Well, now I don't take your compliment from before when you said no, I need to do stand up because no. I'm funny. You said everyone can. Do I it. think you're ready. I think you're ready to go and just start telling stories. I think people see comedians with how like precise they are with their punchlines and that stops people from trying it. But I think if you mind your own life, you know, you've got hilarious ways that you look at your own experiences like self self-deprecation i'm very self-deprecating which i feel like can be good as a comedian but you know what i think i would thrive at and maybe this is just me and i would actually bomb at it um is crowd work i feel like i would be really good at that i think that's a, i think you should start doing it 
That's it. Oh my god, what if that is my next thing? I want to just shine light, and it could be through laughter. Make it your own thing that doesn't have to be, you know, that doesn't have to be something that you're just trying to sell tickets for. Just go to some open mics. I went to one last night just to see some, meet some comics, and it's amazing how <gasps> kind in you see the community of everyone hustling. Everyone's got a story. Everyone's like working their butts off to survive. I mean, we've all done it. Everyone in LA is an Uber driver. I did it for years. Did you? Oh yeah, I, did I need every, an Uber driver story. Everything you can think of, and it's just so that you can free up enough time to go do stand up and and figure it out and then one I day mean, it really it works. is a grind but that's so i like growing up i always wanted to dance and in my 20s i would just work at different that's why i worked in the restaurant industry so i could have certain hours so that i could go to auditions and dance and do all that um but that never worked for me well it didn't until it did my mirror balls right there if you isn't that weird though but, but that's like in your greater biography how beautiful yeah. I mean, like, because dancing's dancing. You got to do it on a, I mean, you got robbed that it was pandemic. Uh, yeah. I say, I say no, a Neve, redo for Neve you. Neve got robbed because he lost. But <laughs> <laughs> I saw him the other night at the Sports Illustrated party and he was like, still mad. <laughs> he unfollowed me on Instagram and I was like, dude. And then I, I unfollowed him because I saw that he unfollowed me. I'm petty like that. And then I walked down the stairs <laughs> and I see him standing there and I was just like, I have some weird thing, and I think I've said this on podcasts before, where as soon as I unfollow someone on Instagram, I run into them. Interesting. Without fail to the point where, like, one guy, I was like, my ex played hockey with this guy. Like, I haven't talked to him in, like, five, six years. Wouldn't even ever see him again. He lives in a different country. I landed in Toronto, and he was waiting for his bags next to where I was waiting for my bags. And I was like, because I unfollowed him. But you don't do you you don't have that app that tells you when someone unfollows you, do you? No. Okay, so that would be terrible. Oh, I would have. never do that to myself. You just randomly stumble upon that. I I would never the reason I find out if people unfollow me is because sometimes I'll do an Instagram cleanup and I'll, if I go, eh, maybe I'll click on them and then if they I'm like, "Hey, they unfollowed me." And then I'm like, "Well, that's an easy unfollow when I do the cleanup." The cleanup, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I I ran this bot that was supposed to get me Instagram followers. This is a couple of years ago. And but what it does is it unfollows it ended up unfollowing everyone I followed. So I oh. had comedians that like, and, and, and how many people would tell you they just held on to this bitterness? Uh, and I saw this one guy oh. and I was supposed to do a show. And I was like, hey, when's the show? And he goes, why would I let you on my show? You unfollow me. And I was like, Bubba. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I was like, I, it was this app. I I, unfollow, I accidentally unfollowed like a thousand people. Okay, that's going to be my excuse if someone ever calls it me out. It was supposed <laughs> to unfollow people that I didn't follow. It was supposed to get rid of like spam accounts. Yeah. And just clean up the ratio. But it really but it just cleaned up all of your clothes as friends yeah oh, and then you, and then you want to re-follow them but you don't want them to get the alert that you're fo just following them the instagram is so funny like why would i invite you you it's like you didn't invite me to your birthday party it's like you unfollowed me on instagram it's so funny but how do you even you a million i mean how do you even navigate your dms like how do you even Oof. sift through who needs to talk to you versus who's just chirping you I am so woo-woo in this where I go, if I'm supposed to talk to that person, it'll happen somehow. Like, they'll email my media account or they'll get in touch with the right people to get in touch with me. Uh, but I I try to not go too heavy into the DMs um, because they're nasty. Yeah. There, there's some really mean ones in there. Well, Instagram, it, first of all, yeah, you're, you're, the audience is way too close to you yeah. in, in some ways. And you want some people to be close to you, but... You know, when there was a, you know, because obviously I make I make bachelor content. There was someone who um, who was not looked at well after their season, and I messaged them to say, hey, you know, hang in there, you're gonna be okay. And it was a friend Clayton. of their, uh, <laughs> no, it's Tino. Oh. I think he's talked oh. about it. And and, oh, was, okay, and, and some guy was like, hey, um, this is Tino's friend. He, he I'm, I'm like moderating Aww. his account right now, but just so you know, he, I told him, and he was like, thanks so much. And I was like, that's a friend. Yeah, that's someone who's. Give it, like helping you out through that's, a situation that nobody makes would kind of want to cry <laughs> how sweet is that i hated tino and that i'm like god he's still a real person like he pissed off one of my closest friends and he was kind of a mess but like i still don't want him to get hate like that yeah the wrecking ball never stops at its target and that's the problem mm. it just bulldozes the collateral damage and nobody who hasn't been through the public scrutiny understands i've got like the vaccine from it because i've gotten a tiny bit of that but i was I'm, gonna you know, ask you i was gonna ask you because i'm sure there's you know such thing as hecklers at live shows and all that but have you got trolled on 
your social media. YouTube seems to be kind of a scary place for trolls. You know what? My my YouTube's pretty good, but it nice. did get to a size where there is a, some hate out there, but it's not attached. I don't, it almost it almost sucks more when it's like you can click on someone and you can see like their history. Yeah. And that that makes me feel like it's real. Mm. I never once in over a decade in stand up felt a certain way from a comment. Only through the the, through the bachelor audience did it feel like it hit personal and we fought i mean like you learn you sometimes you'll fight with someone and we had my, this this one my what my wife when we were just dating before we got engaged posted something you know supporting a political candidate it was 2016 right and someone commented on it you're not hot enough to have a political opinion <laughs> i i because they were like posted a bikini photo that was like we support this person it was like a cute cheeky thing and i went down the rabbit hole we found out this guy was a coach at a college football program we messaged him his wife his daughter Good. being like do you support this we not we didn't publicly shame him we just went after him and they all sided with him and whatever and it went back and forth you know and like we like I was like, I'm going to start commenting on this guy's high school football or his college football <laughs> roster. Like, you're not hot enough to score touchdowns. Yeah. Or whatever, just really. And I was like, oh, I can't be doing this anymore. Oh, because that gets that's a slippery slope. That's very fun. But then to a certain point, you're like, well, now I'm just I'm I say this on the podcast. I'm all about sinking to their level. I really am. Once in a while, I like to go down to that level and just like do a little jab back and be like, mm, that felt really good. For example, the other day, this lady was like, you've got so many mental health issues. And uh, it's no surprise that you're posting about being depressed again. And it, she just like went off. Mm. And I looked at her page and she had her beautiful daughter as her profile picture and her bio was just I'm a mom. And I said, please do better for your daughter. Like, I said, I just showed this to my mom and thanked her for raising me right to not bully other people with mental health mm. and do better for your daughter. And usually they'll come back or apologize or clap back silence. And I was like, I think that one hit. <laughs> and that felt really good. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, you just no one would ever talk like that to someone else. I've never no. had anyone at a stand up show talk to me that way. No. You know, Elvis didn't have comment sections. Right. No one's like, hey, the hound dog sucks. <laughs> It didn't exist. <laughs> sure, true. he had no, but you know what I mean. It was like there was this, and everyone goes, "Well, we need to teach people a lesson." It's like you're. This is this is not it. No, and you're not helping people. And like you said well, before, when you want to spread love, that ain't it. That trying ain't to it. shame people into feeling a certain way. That and it, it always is like the, people are like idolizing you. That's usually where hate comes from because it's jealousy, and jealousy is just exposing what you want in your life. And so, anytime someone's jealous or having these thoughts, I'm just like. Ugh, they just want what I have. And that's sad that they're this angry because they have children and now they're just going to like project this onto their kids. And then I'm going to have to promote Hoffman even more to go do inner child work <laughs> to their children when I'm 80. It's and that's what we do. We pass it down to our kids. And, um, you know, so uh, for because when I when I look at things like the, the way the way we treat each other and the way we try not to, we were all we've all been guilty of it. But one person at a time learns. Oh my gosh, I I, I didn't realize that this message would get to you. It's like, oh, yeah. what were you doing then? What yeah. what did you think was going to happen <laughs> yeah. here? These are humans. So when I start when my channel started to take off, I started to make some money. I yeah. started to talk to people yeah. about it. I know Jason has has addressed these sorts of things where people get very weird. My channel's been very lucrative in the last couple of years. It's yeah. changed my life. Yeah, we're gonna buy a house. We're gonna get a kid I now. Things we didn't even think of because. Because why are we going to have a kid in a studio apartment? Right. You know, our worlds have just enlarged in so many ways. It's very weird for some people who are, you know, living a minimum wage world. Right. And, I, and I've been there. I've done all the gigs, like I said, Uber and all that. And I understand that. But like, I'm not your enemy. Right. You know what I mean? You have the tools to to do try your best. Yeah. You, everyone's got a phone. Just start talking into it if that's what you want to do. Find a way to get some equity in like all these people that are online spending their whole day commenting about things. You can monetize that. Yeah. Have an opinion and go out and share it. Right. Isn't that interesting? But people's brains don't work like that. If only we could just be presidents of the United <laughs> States of America and just change the world. I don't think I could. I'm Canadian. That should be on my yeah. bucket list. Yeah, you can't be president. Mm. Sorry. What if I'm dual? No, you have to be born in the U.S. Or a territory. It's a whole thing. I, I act like I'm actually thinking about this. Like, oh, <laughs> that's too bad. Can't. We could maybe get you like a Senate position. We could work <laughs> on that. Maybe mayor. Okay, my vinyls. It's not too late to shop for Father's Day. It's really not. It's coming up, but you're not late yet. And he doesn't need a wireless phone charger, a portable speaker, or a knee brace. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll tell you what he needs. A smart meat thermometer that makes sure he doesn't over or undercook his steak again. Meter is a sleek, smart meat thermometer that guarantees the perfect cook every single time, whether he's an amateur, a chef, or experienced grill master. This is a gift for him. It gives a countdown for the cook so he can spend time with family, have an old fashioned, you know, or catch up on his latest crime dramas. I don't know what your dad does. You'll know exactly when to take the food off the heat and when it's ready to chow down. Super simple, super easy, perfect results. I know that the old Pops has definitely made some grilling errors in the past. Jason loves a good grill. I have definitely made my fair share of mistakes on the grill. So who can blame us? But with meter, you won't have to pretend you're enjoying the food because it will come out perfect. It can be used in a grill, oven, pan, air fryer, literally anywhere. And I'm telling you, this is the perfect gift and cooking tool for the dad or truly anyone in your life to level up their grilling game. Shop now on meter.com to access the special Father's Day 20% off deal. Barbecue season is coming up, y'all. Get dad grilling with the best meat thermometer out there and get it now 20% off on meter.com that's m-e-a-t-e-r.com okay are you looking for summer's it bra well i found it for you it's third love's 24 7 t-shirt bra now available in a timeless and versatile white shade perfect to go under all your summer outfits and every outfit starts with its first layer so why not make it an amazing one with a smoothing band and no slip pleated straps, all day comfort and support is possible in 13 colors, including seven shades of neutral. Available in 60 plus sizes, you'll walk away with a bra that actually fits, making every day a great boob day. Don't believe us? Well, one, I'm offended. I would never lie to you. And the 37,000 plus five star reviews prove that this bra is the real deal. So visit thirdlove.com to find your fit and shop their best selling bras. Get $15 off your first purchase. So you got into all this reality TV and you do stand up and you have all these platforms and channels where you, every day you do a pop, what is it? Pop culture? I did, I did three videos today and a podcast from my hotel room. Yeah. You did three videos today and a podcast from your hotel room? I did a video on you. <gasps> you did? Yeah. I can't wait to You say had that. grocery store Joe and you were talking about Bali and the Maldives and uh -huh. I was like, I've gone to Bali and I'm going to the Maldives. I'll oh. talk about this. Oh my God, so I, I just love pull it. from the content. I aggregate what's interesting to me. I promote it and then I just run. How a... many hours a day do you think you spend on research for reality television? I'm, I'm only. Because it's your job. It's, I try to make it, I try to like really, oh, thank you so much. I try to compartmentalize because I did get obsessive. So like if, sure. if there's a breakup that happens as I leave here, if I can't make it back to my hotel in time, I might just cover it from the car. You know what I mean? Cool. Like there are certain stories that are so pressing and viral. Yeah. When, aside from those, which only happen maybe once a month, it's usually when I'm away from my computer. I had to do one at, well, in line at, at Disney World with my family. Stop. Yeah. When Katie when uh, Katie Thurston was doing her 12 days of mess, my channel's like, oh, yeah. I mean, people yeah. are going nuts. It was Thanksgiving weekend. So like no one had anything better to do. Right. And um, you're like, if I don't do this now, like that helps you. Oh yeah, and people love the the sort of um, blue the collar in the moment aspects yeah. of it. Like we're going live, and it's kind of manic. Yeah. And but no, I try to do like eight a.m. to twelve p.m. to one eight one p.m. I try to make it a four or five hour grind oh. done, and it's like that's my that's my day, and I do it. I do it. I, and when we were in Bali for our honeymoon, as much as people would probably roll their eyes that I would spend a couple hours a day doing that, it's I it's enjoy your, it. Yeah. And my wife is an introvert, so when I'm doing that, she's reading a book. She's happy that I'm not bothering her. Oh, I would be. I was like, gonna ask. About, I was like, does your wife do this with you? Does she enjoy it? Like what? So she, her personality is more introverted and she's like, you do your thing. She's an introvert who can mask as an extrovert. Ah, an ambivert. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. she, well, well, yeah, but she, she gains her energy from being alone and she can, she can be fine at a party, but it'll like might drain her the next day. Okay. So I, I so the fact that I go do, do stand up, I kind of burn off this thing and then I can come home and I try to scrub that energy. You yeah. know, sometimes I'll come home like hot, kind of like, right. hey, blah, blah, and she'd be like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's bring it down. Okay. So you do like five hours ish a day. Then you put out content every day on this. Um, what did you think about, I mean, it's kind of old news now, but I'm still curious about what happened between um, Brandon and Serene. 
Yeah, that was one that I think people saw for a little bit. Oh, they did? Coming along. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, at least a month or so. I mean, Why? Because they like weren't posting together. Yeah, the internet's so good. So, so they are, the internet freaks me out. They're, they do most of the work for me now. Like, I always tell Absolutely. people, don't just tell me if you like a, a podcast. Tell me what minute I should be listening. Just mm-hmm. help me out there yeah. because I can't listen to it all. Yeah. And, yeah, they were kind of on top of that. And um, we, I knew from some other sources they were going to break up. But those types of stories, you just kind of wait because... It's like that's their moment to share. Yeah. Um, and then you. Re- Thank you for that. That you know what I get pissed off at is on TikTok. Anybody out there who does this, I'm mad at you. When they go, I listen to the podcast, so you don't have to. And then they give you all the breakdown, and I'm like, you can. Uh, I respect the hell if you're listening to my podcast and you give pointers out of what like what's happened in the podcast or like whatever. Don't I know, say, that must be so infuriating. I worked. I listened to it, so you don't have to. I'm like. But I worked at it so that people <laughs> can listen to my podcast. I don't want you to listen so that nobody else does. I read this. I made this podcast so you don't have to read about yeah. it from someone else. I'm like, we work really hard. In the end, even even if people say that, it will be good promo for you because I feel like That's most true. people. So like, yeah, what I do, if you have an hour long podcast, I might share five minutes of it. But um, you know, you don't. Obviously, it's like it's it's commentary is not about ripping off. It's like a fair use where I'm just trying to promote. So like That's your true. your convo with Joe, I'm sure the bali conversation was really had nothing to do but for me i was like oh yeah i'll talk about bali yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know i'm just kind of around and yeah it, that's fine with me but sometimes you'll hear someone like you had, you had a recent episode where you mentioned your ex yeah. and i was like oh this is they're gonna go off of this <laughs> and of course they do but we are we are talking about it in a long form where you know us weekly these titles they write they they take quotes and then they summarize leading up to the quote yeah and it's like how journalistically it's it's ridiculous what they get away with because you because you don't don't have a hurtful bone in your body you were just sharing your life experience when you say that you're like you know the, the media always has this headline or something they pick from it but really so in all the last few podcasts i've been i've tried to be conscious of how i speak about my ex because I think it's because of inner child work I did. I, ho- I wrote a whole letter to him in like this inner child work because it was to people who you still hold resentment against or people that have hurt you and all this stuff. So I, as everybody knows, I'm such an open book. So I talk about everything. I still talk about my ex from Germany where people are like, we've f-ing heard it a million times, Caitlin, but it's how I process things. It's how I work through things. And I'm also an open book. So on a, the latest few podcasts, I don't know if you've heard that I actually kind of try and speak highly of Sean, where I say, like, I have complete compassion for what he went through. And if I say this, this is on me. This is my feelings. I'm not saying it's true. Like, I'll try and really have empathy and compassion for his side because I'm like, you know, it's been so much time and I don't need to speak negatively anymore. And so on Jason's podcast, I had said something about how I felt like... <laughs> Um, He used me. I didn't even think I said fame, but media took it that way. I I felt like I was used at the end. He was hanging on to the relationship um, to open his gym. And to me, I'm like, well, I was hanging on to the relationship because I didn't want to lose the dog Tucker. Like we were both hanging on to things for certain reasons. Yeah, he's he's working on building this thing. Like that's and yeah. And And I said, this is probably on me and my insecurities and blah blah. Who knows if it's true? But the media, of course, took it and said. Sean hung on on to Caitlin's fame until he opened his gym. Well, then fast forward to a few days later, I get a text from Sean and I haven't talked to him in years. And he goes, I don't know if you're still living in Nashville, but uh, I'm like, he's tired of media reaching out to him and asking for comments. And he goes, you know, I've moved on with my life and I would prefer to not speak negatively about a relationship that ended five years ago. And I was like, oh, boy. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> did you ask him if you actually listened to it yes <laughs> so i took some time to process what he said and i wanted to be like okay i'll be cognizant of this for next time as i'm talking about him uh, but not negatively uh so i wrote him back and i just said hey um yeah you know what i've I've been in your position, maybe not in the media, but I've had people around town tell me certain things that definitely offended me about what you've said and done. Um, I've never known how to go about that because I didn't know if it was necessary to reach out to you because we have both both moved on with our lives. Um, But I understand that that must be frustrating hearing those things. I just need you to know that if you actually listen to the podcast, I try and speak highly and not negatively about you um and happy to chat any further if if you want to hear in context what i said but i'll be cognizant moving forward 
about how I speak of I you. I love how corporate it's yeah, uh, so corporate. <laughs> best. Yeah, yeah. Warm wishes. <laughs> Toodles. Toodaloo. Uh, but, but he also said in the first message, like, I don't know if you want to get together and talk. And so I said, I don't know how you want to go about it. But like, yeah, I've heard shit, too. And then it was just silence. Yeah, I mean, just nuance goes away in print media, and and again, I'm I'm no moral barometer for it. I I make clickbait thumbnail titles. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get clicks too, but like we're trying to have the conversation where, oh come on, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course, he's opening a gym. He's not gonna try to deal like get all this publicity in the other direction. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, you're allowed to tell your life. I mean, what's interesting with you is obviously as a public figure those are things that will come out like articles and everything, but yeah. it's never in good faith because everyone it's all it's, I always talk about like corporations being like psychopathic. Right. So like yeah. magazines, they don't feel emotion. Everyone's oh, yeah, just trying no. to keep their job. No, they're like bachelor producers. There's a special place in hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because everyone's self-serving. Everyone's yeah. like, yeah, they might like you, but if they can cross you and it gets them a promotion, Hey, this is the hunger games. See, I find that really hard to do because so with my podcast, there's so many podcasts out there. There's so many different like people I could consider competitive and I could, you know, completely use people for headlines and, and I just can't do it. Like if a, if a media headline picks it up, sure. I can't do anything about that. But I am like so terrified to use somebody's pain or experience where it was like traumatic for them to be like, oh, and then make that a note, like write that down for a headline. Like I just couldn't do it. Yeah. It, well, it becomes it, it, it can be it can weigh on you when when I'm covering certain heavy topics. I'm like, oh. Man, I, I just I just try my best to talk about people as if I'm going to see them at a bar. You know what I mean? I'm trying not to talk shit. But well, if someone doesn't like if I don't if I disagree with someone, I'll argue their point and not the person. Yeah. Nick, Nick Vile had, had some really uh, bonehead takes, I thought, on his recent talk about mental health. And now and I'm like, look, hey, I'm I think he's done a great job of building his brand and his business and all that. But like, I disagree with that. Yeah. And I think we should be OK disagreeing with things. And do, do you because you I always tell people like monetize your wine. I mean, it's all brilliant stuff you guys are doing here. Do you get you, you do you get like this shame from people that you like, oh, so and so is 15 minutes of fame or up and it's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, says, who? says who? I I used to get that a lot more. Um, like every time there's a new Bachelor and Bachelorette on, they always tell me the main comment they get when they're done the show. And then they show up back on the next season for like, you know, a cameo or the producers are like, hey, we're going to pay you to come back on. And you're like, sure. Everyone's like, get off my TV screens. You're done. You're 50 minutes. Like they love you at one point and they will just chew you up and spit you out at the next point. And you never know what they're going to do. And then you have to like build them back up to grow with you and be like, ah, and what was the question? Uh, of uh, just 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 when you, when you monetize and start making oh, money the 15 minutes yeah 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 at first like your 15 minutes you've created an empire at- embrace the empire and don't worry about that they were able to extend it you just took an opportunity you would yeah. look, you would have been you would have been successful regardless of bachelor you didn't you saw it and again maybe i'm projecting onto you so correct me no. but like you you saw a world and this is why i'll be honest i i tell my wife this all the time who i just love so deeply Aww. that you your story is very much like hers Ooh. where she she was midwestern she's from kentucky and she took a, a like an almost an internship in new york city mm-hmm. and never went home mm. she had to prove herself outside of this yep. world that she existed in yeah. and she needed to be more than that and she became that and she succeeded Mm -hmm. and she taught herself something that you just wish you can you wish you can teach your kids this one day yeah and i always i tell her like we're we might start trying to have kids we don't know but i'm like we want the caitlin bristows we want our kids (laughs) to have that sort of be what you want to be and create that but i don't know how my mom will cry listening to you say that because she'll be like i did it yeah (laughs) but that's just the world you saw and you created so like whether bachelor or not i mean you would have figured it out i do i do think i would have i have very much like all of my friends all of my family would say the same thing where they're just like you had no backup plan like you were just like i'm going to make something of my name and that's that's it plan b's are 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 they're just a thing people talk about so that they feel safer as a sex tape there you go if all else fails you heard it here canceled i'm just gonna put out a raunchy sex (laughs) where you just start talking just drama just share some you know some start talking about all of your exes us weekly is gonna be like what do we do with all this it's a sex date but she (laughs) oh yeah i'll make it into only fans account where i'm just just like showing my feet have some wine (laughs) (laughs) i'll just show my feet and talk about my ex-boyfriends i spilled spade and sparrows all (laughs) over myself here i do think part of parenting and what my parents did a really good job at is they never 
um, had an expectation of what they wanted me to do ever. It wasn't like, well, you need to go do this and you need to get a good job. You have to go to college, like pick where you're going. It was never, it was, what do you want to do? What are you passionate about? Be who you are. Like they very much brought my sister and I up that way to just like live the most authentic life. And that brings happiness, which is really cool. It's hard to tell people. I mean, a lot of, you have to, you know, there's, uh, there's someone who I was thinking of, her name's Alicia. She sells, um, uh, she makes crocheted items yeah. and she, um, and that's what she loves to do. And, and you know, like I, I bought, I made her, I, I commissioned her to make a little, a YouTube play button for me. Cute. Cause I was like, I love you. You can do that. Yeah. You can do that. You can create the world you want and work really hard, but it doesn't feel like hard work when it, when you're building equity and doing it for you, not uh -huh. working for somebody else. Yeah. And when we talk about no plan B, like, yes, yeah, some people get in situations where they have to provide for their kids or there's yeah, of course. there's always something that can get in the way but find a way to work really hard and make it work i always say leap in the net will appear mm -hmm. but you have to go and do it you, yeah you have to like get up there and do it and then you'll see the world conspire around you it's and it is true. a friendly world and things start to line up like where did it line up for you when like before bachelor like did you start to see this the, the seas open up like what, what yeah. do you have a moment where that it's always the rock bottoms. It was always, it was the crying on my parents' couch, getting addicted to Valium because I didn't want to feel feelings anymore to then just like build myself back up. And then once you hit that rock bottom and then you build yourself back up and you see, whoa, that was like the lowest point of my whole life. And a year later, I'm like working and making so many new friends and built myself back up and feel like I could do anything. If you could do that in like a short amount of a year is quick. I mean, it, in the grand scheme, but the of quantum things, leap does not exist like linearly time. -wise. No, it, it, the, the quant, quantum leap, right. is the idea of like an electron goes from one level to another and they've done studies. They don't see it go from one level to another. It disappears and then yeah. reappears. Yeah. And it's that idea that lightning can spark and you can change your energy and can flip like a magnet can flip on a dime and then yeah. boom i figured it out it's almost yeah. like a rock bottom is almost like um scrubbing the shame off you and you go well i've really messed up yeah clean slate I, yeah i might as well just do what i want to do <laughs> that's how i felt after bachelorette where i was like holy shit i can't believe i did it i'm the bachelorette i'm gonna do this i have this name for myself now and then after everything i remember in another just like complete downward spiral being like you don't like this feeling caitlin you piece of shit everybody on the internet hates you and i was just like and then i flipped it where i went okay everyone hates you people are slut shaming you you like to empower women like let's turn this negative into a positive and like use your voice for something and then that as soon as I did that, it wasn't like the rain clouds and the, everything's, you know, a storm. It was like everything was like this light coming in and I started getting the right jobs and the right brand deals and certain things started happen, happening for me. And that's happened a few times, like not to dog on my ex. I'm not saying that. But when that breakup happened, it was I was in a very toxy place. And as soon as I got rid of that energy everything started I'm, I'll never forget he like moved out and then the next day the CEO of my podcast company thank you oh RIP Norm he passed um but he was like I'm gonna get you my private jet and I'm gonna fly you out to um this place to speak on a panel with me and Jewel and Mario Lopez and I was like whoa okay and I'm just sitting on a private jet reading a book and like doing emails about my own wine label and I'm like what? What's just happening? And then everything just started flowing in the right way because I just got rid of a certain energy. And it doesn't mean he's a bad guy. It just no. means he was, it was, you were like we an were anchor. We were bad together. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that, and that's hard for people to cope with yeah. because especially if you're like an, an overachiever, you want your relationship to work oh and gosh. you've got this public relationship that it's like, how bad do you want the public perception that this is good and how long can you keep up with? That's why like with Katie Thurston, her and Blake, they didn't work out and she was like, we're done. We're just, we're not going to yeah. try to fake it for three more months. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, good. I mean, yeah. like how much, how much are you going to put yourself through hell just to please strangers? That is so important where I think a lot of bachelor people do that. Um, I did it. I feel like it's like you feel like you're responsible for to have a glorified gl glorified relationship to your viewers because that's what you're known for. And when you fail at that and you don't have that anymore in there, either like, well, what the fuck am I following you for? It's for the love story. And that that's just all like, you know, in your head. But you do feel this responsibility to all these bachelor loyal bachelor 
watchers. And imagine if that was real life. Like in real life, you can meet someone at the bar and yeah. it can fizzle out. Mm-hmm. Maybe the sex was good, but you didn't mm-hmm. have the. And it just you move on. And the, and then really with the Bachelor franchise, that proposal is just the the start of something. Yeah. That's then the real life comes in and you go, oh boy, like I'm a hard worker, you're not, or whatever. You know, you're all everyone's going at different speeds. You almost want to find somebody in life that you can grow upwards with, but yeah. not one entangles the other. Two trees next to each other yeah. sharing the sun. Yeah. That's what you want. And you don't always get that when you're in some fantasy world where everything's perfect. Oh, I know. How did you find that? Did you go through bad heartbreaks? Oh, yeah. You did? Yeah. I I mean, I just a, the, the, it was either uh, it was either I was super casual with, and I always say like now casual sex with my wife is like no one it, that's when you when you're married casual sex is when neither participant wants to get on top like that's <laughs> casual sex just leaning there being like are we gonna do this you have socks on you're like this is casual your, your retainer's still in you yeah, know yeah, you're but like different. this they, is just like a, a release like we just gotta do it because it's been a while yeah, yeah. Th- <laughs> things change a little bit when you're married but but when yeah when you're single like I I would project and be super codependent and think someone was perfect because their family was wealthy like yeah. you just start yeah. doing these crazy things and you paint red flags white and you try to make it all work and then it doesn't and you gotta and in most of my relationships I was the one getting dumped because I would be the one that would fight to the point where I would was and it's almost like a lot of times in a breakup you don't want the other person to break up with you because you just want to date long enough where you can find out why you wanted to break up with them yeah and it's like that's not healthy yeah, <laughs> that's not. yeah that's not. so yeah I mean I've had those moments you know, it's super embarrassing I'm writing love letters I, I, I'm saying typing but I'm like writing love letters and yeah. sending them to them after I've been dumped and it's like okay come on you oh, know. I know we've all we've yeah. all it's so my, one of my favorite lines now is if they want to they will yeah because. That's just so simple and so easy to digest. If they want to, they will. And like if that person wanted you, you know, wanted to write you back a love letter, they would. Or if they wanted you to be their boyfriend or like you have to always just remember if they wanted to, they will. And if they don't, you'll get over it. My wife and I had plenty of times where I thought we were going to break up. Really? And I was like, if she doesn't meet me at this um, was like Noah's bagels in Hollywood. I was like, if she doesn't meet me at this bagel place. It's over. Like either it's not oh my God, over. Cutthroat. Well, not in a way <laughs> you guys where. Like, no, no, no. And I don't even engaged. mean that. Like if you don't get here, it wasn't. Like, it, it, my mental narration yeah, was like, oh. I need to see that it, it doesn't have to be 50 50. It can be 99 mm-hmm. one. I just want to see that there's some sort of, and, and because uh, you know, she's like counter dependent and I'm codependent. So I want to smother her and she'll be like, get away from me. Mm-hmm. No, she's a pretty woman who's had to have, who's had obsessive boyfriends. Yeah. So she's yes. had, she's had that before. Yeah. And I've had to realize that I can't hug my way out of things. I got to yeah. take a lap. You know, the dog loves it. I take him for a bath, a walk, you know, yeah. he loves it when, when I'm, you know, uh, you know, when I'm she trying to like, space and, yeah. yeah. And I had to learn that cause I'm not a space giver naturally. So you and you like obviously words of affirmation, as you said, but what's is your love language, how you give physical touch? Well, it's hard for me to know what I try to give for affirmations. And those are like, give a pretty woman affirmation. She's like, who cares? This, <laughs> a stranger when I went to go get the mail gave me affirmations. Right. You know what I mean? And so hers is quality time. She uh, really loves quality too. time. And, you know, I could that's just not it for me. So yeah. I have to remember not just time, quality time. So we have we call it device free time, DFT. Because, you know, you you do business on your phone and then you'll start scrolling TikTok. And I got to be like, are we are we good now? Are we still doing business? Right. When can we put the phones away and connect? Not to toot my own horn, but I've, I've since I did the inner child work, I feel like I'm better at putting my phone down and like taking in moments or like when I, when I take the dogs on walks, like I will not bring my phone. I'll oh, like great. Take in like I'll look at the freaking trees or birds going by or like I'll notice the sky. Like I'll really try and be present in that. But that's again, why is it so hard for people knowing, you know, well, you can't create and consume at the same time. You so you just you just can't. There's one or the other. And sometimes like for me, when I'm like writing stand up, I'll try to listen to some music, but I can't listen to a podcast right. because you're absorbing that. Yeah, I'll try to do listen to like, you know, instrumental house music or something. Just give me some grooves that I don't have to focus on. And then I can let my mind wander. But yeah. I, I, this year I stopped bringing my cell phone into the bedroom and glorious i haven't broken it once although uh, in the hotel i did so but that's like i'm alone yeah, but or whatever. In your hotel that's fine yeah you but can have an excuse it, it's i haven't done it yet it's what five six months into yeah so and tell me what it's done for you i go to bed <laughs> i go to You're bed like asleep. i'll still turn the tv on and put on some like boring i put yeah. on like boring wilderness shows oh it's like some guy trying to kill a turtle you know like you know Obsessed some like with boring nature shows to fall asleep i love like, it was Alone? Have you ever watched Alone? Love Alone. Oh my God, me too. Huge Alone. I started during the pandemic and Same. I was just like, I'm like feasting on potatoes, <laughs> like fattening myself up as I watch these people starve trying to catch tilapia. Yeah, but then you're like, see, but I like when I do it, I go, 
okay, I, I'll take in what they're doing. I'll just eat my own delicious food, but I'm going to take in what they're doing in case I'm ever In case. Stranded. How about that celebrity alone? Would you do that? No. I mean, unless they pay me like a million bucks. You've said before that you wouldn't do a reality show that you didn't have executive control over, which I think is really smart. Yeah, I, I, You're done with that. I, I just can't risk it anymore. I'm too proud of where I'm at. Um, and maybe that could be my plan B if things, you know, if all my listeners turn on me. I'm just kidding. No, but, but like, you're, you're a funny person. So sometimes you go for a joke and you can't take it back if it doesn't come out well. I told a joke on night one of The Bachelor. And when I was watching The Bachelor season one back, I'm like, oh, f- you're making me the villain. I'm going to be the asshole. I'm going to be the jokester. I'm going to be like the person that everybody hates from my edit on night one. And I remember in night one getting along with everybody. And but the way they can edit is insane. And I told this joke. <laughs> and when I watch it back, I was like, no, everybody laughed, but they edited it and they made it look like people were looking at me like, what the f*** did she just say? And like, Chris gave me a dirty look and like all this. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but everybody really laughed in that moment. They just edited it in a certain way. Yeah. And you can't control. And what... there's I mean, they could have made me look like I say this all the time. They could have made me look like just the worst. I'm guilty of having judged people for the villain edit they got. Same. And you just have to realize. Because you're like, how much could they actually edit that person? But then I think about it, I'm like. Mm-hmm. You could, they could be <laughs> repeating back something someone said to them. There's just a million things. And, and not to mention, you know, the, 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 the lack of sleep and the social pressures. I understand social oh my pressures. God. My sense of humor, I, I could come across as a huge dick, especially back then when I was 30, 29. Like I was, my sense of humor was poking at people. Yeah, and it's a way to diffuse a situation. And if that's not edited in 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 a in an honest way, you know, they can take the laugh out. They can do whatever, hold on to someone's response from a different thing. And yeah. it's like, no, 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 that killed. That was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say that too because a lot of times uh, with stand up, you'll record you'll record from the back of the room, which is good good for the video. But then the audio gets everyone laughing away. Yeah. So it gets the it gets the amplified sound coming to the camera, but not the, uh, the audience uh, laughing. You're yeah. like, no, this was funny. That was than actually this. really funny. I, uh, you know. Yeah. So now <laughs> like I bring my phone onto the stage and record from the stage. I'm like, I will absorb your laughter. Yeah. To make sure that this is a good bit. That's a good point though. That's a good point. Um, so what do you have coming up? I know you're doing, what do you call it in the cars? What do, I call it driving with Dave. Driving with Dave. And it's just a, I, a car ride uh, is a, is a, like movement is always good for creativity. Yeah. So when you're driving in the car, you're just in a place where like, it's kind of like being by the river. Things are moving and, and, and you can just have a nice conversation. So I set up three cameras in my car with lavalier mics and I just have been driving people around. It makes it hard Fun. for people to say no. Cause I'm like, I'll pick you up. Yeah. I'll pick you up. <laughs> I'll be Make there. It really I'll, easy for you. I'll drive you to the airport. Thanks. What do you, you know, like <laughs> where are these dogs coming from? Oh, okay. Thank you. Roman cries. So precious. It's the most precious thing. Um, okay, so you drive, and what kind of ramen? Take your little wine and some. Our else. dog's problem is he shits inside now because he's so old. Oh, so it's like it's not a baby. sound; it's a smell, and you go. Oh, oh, but that because <laughs> he's old. That makes me want to cry. No doggy diapers. No. And, oh. Yeah. No, I can't handle that. I can't handle it. My dogs will live forever. It's gonna be the weirdest thing on planet Earth. It's gonna be. We're crazy. at the stage where this was my wife's dog before I came into the picture, and he has been her emotional su- support dog. And now you, it, the beauty of an elderly dog is you, you it's the opposite of a child who grows out of it. The dog's growing into this and you just have to like love them regardless of how much they piss you off nonstop. (laughs) I can't handle the dog's getting older. Um, Okay, so you... Oh, now Banks is going (laughs) to interrupt this freaking crazy dog. Hi, I know you like this chair. I know. (laughs) Banks. Um, I really want to drive around with you. I always tell people, like, I will pick you up from the airport. Uh, I, I do whatever, I mean, you know what I mean? it really is just a lot. I, I just love that I've seen you do it with Susie and um, Katie. And I was like, that's so fun because it's just, I mean, again, things I love. Just an honest little conversation. Yeah, I just pick up coffees or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. 
no, no, no pressure. It's just it's it's been Not fun. I, I started doing it because I was I was only doing YouTube. YouTube yeah. took off. The AdSense was amazing. The the way that YouTube pays, and I've been like annoying on on, on videos like yours. Where I'm like, Caitlin needs to be on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> You're too funny. Your visuals, all of that. Well, thank you, because I did get pushed in the right direction, and I'm glad I did. I feel like you've been too successful in other reasons that you haven't needed to be on YouTube. It was my ego. It, wh why? I was like people. I'll get no views and people won't want to and I'll feel my fears will come true. Oh, no. I mean, YouTube's it's Google, right? So it's the biggest search engine in the world. That's true. It's the best way to reach new audiences. And yeah, no, I mean, and I'm not trying to give you advice. You're crushing it. But no, that's I need where, YouTube advice. Well, that's where I started. So that was working. I was like, I don't need to do a podcast because that's just going to take away from the YouTube. But I started the podcast in the fall. It's been it's become a major revenue stream. And then driving with Dave happened because I was like, I don't have a studio right now to host people. Right. So I'm just going to drive around with I them. Love that. Acoustics are good in, in cars yeah, they are. and I've got all the camera gear. My third um, GoPro that I just bought, I bought off some random person on Craigslist and I showed up to them and they had all this like travel gear too and I was like, huh. Uh, I like I like looked her up on Instagram and she had all these bachelorettes that followed her. And I was like, who is, and I texted her, I was like, do you work with a bachelor? She's like, yeah, I'm a producer there. And I like just bought a, go I'm in a city of 10 million people. I, I don't know off the top of my head, okay. um, but uh, I was like, oh, is there, did the camera come with like a memory card? Bro, like, oh, could like, you imagine? I mean, because, you know, they strapped these cameras to a bunch of horses for like the one-on-one -on -one dates or whatever. There was no memory card, but I was like, oh, what a weird world that I needed a quick camera and I purchased it off of a Bachelor producer. Wait, that is so funny. This is going to lead me into confessions because um, in the first week, I think, oh my God, I hope they don't take my mirror ball away for this. In the first week, <laughs> I, they gave me an iPad. And for some reason, all the iClouds were linking up to mine so I could see everybody's dances. <laughs> and wow. I was like, oh, my God, what do I do? And so we had these iPads that everyone gave us because it was the pandemic. We had to do interviews virtually for everything. And so all of a sudden, all everybody's dances were being <laughs> synced up into my iPad. And I asked somebody else, I was like, have you looked through your iPad? They're like, yeah. And I was like, what, what's on there? And they're like, my dances. And I was like, no one else's. So I told Chriselle, I was like, I get everybody's dances online. And she was like, shut up. And I could see everybody. So I was like, okay, they're doing really good. Okay, they, mm, tough bounce for them. And I would like study how good they were Caitlin, doing. Caitlin, this is very tactile of you. I couldn't do anything. I wasn't going to do I said something eventually because I did feel I'm very much have like a guilty conscience where I like can't. So after that first week, I told Artem and I was like, I think I need a new iPad or they need to know. <laughs> but at, for that first week, Your I really guilt got to. You. Oh, it, it was I couldn't sleep at night. Like oh, I felt. Wow. OK, now tell me something embarrassing. Probably four months into my relationship, um, I had probably the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened <gasps> to me. I had a zit. Um, and I had never watched the pimple popper. So this might not have made the highlight reel for like the real pimple poppers, yeah. but she was like, don't pick it. You know? And I had some like film shoot. So I just like left it alone. And yeah. it just was like this factory in my jaw, just this factory of just A like pus getting, factory. Yeah. And it normally like, boop, done, whatever. This was like, it turned, it was probably like a ingrown facial men, men's facial hair is a, is a wicked thing. I know because you can shave clean and then it grows in the wrong way. And next thing you know, so I, there's a photo of me with this thing. My left jaw looked like a cartoon, like hero, oh, like shit. a full thing here. But like, if you, if I didn't point it out, you wouldn't know it's on my Instagram. If you go back years, it's there, really? but like, I'm in like a tuxedo for this like fancy thing, but this one side and I'm like, just don't touch it, get through it. Like, don't make it worse. This whole deal. And then oh, no. she, she picked my car broke down or whatever. So she picked me up from the shoot. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. Oh, That's God. how I know it's on my left side. Um, and nah. I'd done a good job for a few days of just not touching it. Yeah. And I probably scratched, scratched or whatever. The volcano erupted. She squeals. Ah! <laughs> all over her this is the most i've never shared this publicly <laughs> all over her i was like well nice knowing you oh, yeah, i guess i'll real. move to another world now <laughs> because i'm like i'm the type who poop with the door closed i'm so far removed oh, from me. anything cool with body functions like i would never let it she's like let me pop it no 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 and i'm just so like ugh. and That's so but funny. i couldn't do anything i was like oh my gosh i am You're like it's already happened i am so yeah there's no stopping it was just, 
disaster. I would like to know, like, th- like a measurement, like how many teaspoons. Like a, the vol, how voluminous it was. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but I'll tell you this: we, I got back home, and we, you know, cleaned things up, and again, some <laughs> somebody's eating like fettuccine alfredo. <laughs> And they're like, what? they just unsubscribed from me. Yeah. Hey, Caitlin, I went on your podcast and lost followers. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I got home and it was, and I had a show that night and it was days before this thing recovered. Oh. Days or if not weeks. It was, uh, it, because, what it, it, because happened? It, it was an infection. It like, it took for whatever was in there, whatever facial hair had to like come out. Oh. And, um, and it was a brutal, never, nothing's ever happened like that in my life before. And I tried telling my dad, my stepdad, and he was like, well, I was like, I was like, oh, I thought you, I thought I could talk to family about anything. And he's like, no. Like, well, take that one to the therapist. Son. <laughs> I don't want to hear about but it. But she, she was like, very much in that moment, like, no, no, it's okay. Like, she was very kind. You know, if it happened maybe five years in, she'd be like, Dave, what the hell was it? Right. But, but she was like very kind, and I was like, oh, she still loves me. Aww. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was. Uh, I'm like, aw. Yeah, a a heartwarming pimple popping. I mean, it was a cyst. It was a it was a well, real was say, that alien like, yeah, came yeah, out of yeah, my yeah, face. Yeah. Oh, that must have felt so nice. It was amazing. Wow. It was amazing. And too bad you didn't have cameras in your cars then. Yeah, driving with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> driving with Dave, like Slow-mo blooper footage. reel. <laughs> it was. Br- I mean, it jumped across the the armrest. Oh. You know what I mean? It, it like it, yeah, it, it, was... it crossed into another seat. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, it had distance. Was that the grossest thing you've? Uh, no, surprisingly, no. Okay, good. Um, it's up there. <laughs> to me, that's grosser than anything like digestive for me because that's that's just. No, I like that you brought that because I've had all the bodily functions and nobody's really came with a story quite like that. Oh, once so that happened, it. I had a pant shitting years later. Oh, I like yeah. literally didn't shit my pants. I was like thirty five. I was like. <laughs> You're like, really, now's I, the time? Because every comic has a pants shitting bit. Once you get into stand-up, you'll be like, oh, you got that pants shitting bit? Well, I'm going to do mine after. And everyone's got their own unique <laughs> st- twist. But th- but like by the time that uh, he's a Mongolian beef, you know, next day Chinese food uh, issue. Once that happened. Maybe that was me yesterday. Could have been. Yeah. Yeah, some leftovers. I had sushi. <laughs> well, oh, sushi will do it. So that, but I had passed, you know, at that point, I, I was like, okay, she she already loved me. Yeah. She loved me at the facial cyst. You're like, now what else gross things can I do to yeah. test her? Hopefully I didn't gross too many people out there. Oh, gosh, no. That's, I've, if anyone's gross, no, I, I've just, <laughs> I've said so many gross things on here that people like don't even, doesn't even phase them anymore. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast yeah, and so for much being for in me. Nashville. I really want to drive with Dave. Is that what we call it? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Is what is yeah. it? It's on my driving with Dave. It's driving on my podcast, Dave. Bachelor Rush Hour, which is daily. Yes. I've made it so it's ru- like rush hour commute time, 30 minutes or less. Cool. I pull together all of, I listen to all the podcasts so you don't have to. No. Yeah. I promote <laughs> other people's content. I and, do love that. And it's just, and also I share about my life. So, because like in the end, I don't want people to follow me. And, and just for the information, if they don't want to be yeah. along for my ride and yeah. my journey. Yeah. So for all the people that want to come see me stand up wise, um, I'm going to be in New York City next week, Seattle, end of summer, uh, Phoenix, L.A., San Diego, all these different places. Just follow me online and all that. Yeah. Tell everybody where they can follow you. So uh, Instagram, D Neal's D-N-E-A-L-Z. And then Bachelor Rush Hours, a podcast. And just search Dave Neal on YouTube to catch the content. Yeah, there. Your YouTube, everything you do is crushing it. So good oh, for you. you. And um, you had fun in Nashville. I loved it, yeah. Isn't it a great city? It's so cool to come here by myself. I walked down the music row by myself, uh, just like looking like a, the weirdest, like I just look like a psycho. No, by everybody looks like a psycho. It just <laughs> depends on what kind of, you're either puking, drunk, or you're sober, you're alone, you're with 80 people. It's, yeah. Yeah. No, it's been great. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we're considering moving here. I mean, it's just a great, it's a great state That's and it's awesome. close to my, my wife's family. So if we have a kid, maybe right. it'll be closer, but yeah. Well, come th- on down. Thanks so much for having me today. Yeah, I appreciate anytime, it. Anytime, you know, I'll come in your car next time. <laughs> I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday.